Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Big Sky. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, Ginny and Bo are investigating a case where a guy is killed specifically for his car, and I love kind of like where this case ended up going. Well, because initially, like, okay, so. It's kind of sad that someone killed someone over this car, but then it turns out, well, they abandoned the car, and you're like, what's up with that? Turns out they were looking for something very specific in the trunk, and then we find out that there was another car that was stolen before, exact same situation. So it's like, hey, there's one more person with this exact car, let's go see him. The moment Bo showed up at the scene, I was like, it's that guy, he's pretending, he has to be, because it's just like, oh yeah, yeah, sure, I'm like, I have to, in fact, but then like they, it kept going on, I'm like, maybe this actually is a guy, I was like, no, nah, I'm getting this feeling, it's, I was like, because especially he was like, oh, you want to use my baby as bait? I don't know about that. I was like, Man, this is guy. It's got to be. It's got to be. It's got to be. And then, like, there was a thump. He was like, oh, that's my dog. He was like, yep, it's definitely this guy. He's pretending to be the owner. I mean, it all kind of happened. I mean, the bastard got what was coming to him. Uh, he ended up getting shot and killed later on. But I did think it was so interesting because, like, especially when Jenny met that first, met the criminal, like, basically... The third dude was the owner of this car currently, but it had previously belonged to a guy who had just recently, like, well, a few months ago, gotten out of jail for, like, robbery and stuff like that. And so it turns out it was his car, so that's the guy that Ginny was visiting. The guy's like, yeah, I can't move around like I used to. So it's like, right, you could talk to the uh, desk manager, like, there's cameras everywhere. We'll see me leaving here, so. But it turns out he is responsible. He hired the dude to do it, but the guy went and made it. It was a simple job. You just grab people's cars and bounce. But it's like, no, you you ended up doing a stupid thing and you murdered a guy. It's like, right, like. At the end of the day, for him, it was all... He even says at the end of the day, it was all worth it, which I was like, oh, a, 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 a guy died, a, you know, a wife is now a widow because you hired a guy to do something, but he just kind of went about it in a shitty way. I mean, he didn't kill the first person he robbed. It's only the second person he robbed. The third person he kept tied up just because Bo got to him too quickly, so... Uh... But yeah, it's because this all was about a baseball car, which is kind of wild to see, like, because, you know, Jenny's like, yeah, you're about to go back to prison. She's like, I hope it was worth it. He's like looking at it. He's like, yeah, it was. Because Bo's the only one. He's like, oh my God, it's a, it's a Mickey Mantle car. I know nothing about baseball. I'm not, I'm not even the, I'm not in the world of collect, card collecting anyway, whether it be Pokemon, whether Yu-Gi-Oh or anything sports related. But obviously being like, yeah, it's worth like millions. And so it's like, wow. I mean, Bo's kind of excited about it. It's like, cool. Like we could shoot you right now, or you can let us arrest you. And I can let you look at it one more time. And the guy's like, all right, deal. He's like, go ahead. And Bo's like, yeah, yeah sure. And shows off the car. And I'm like, that's such a weird interaction. Cause even Jenny's like, really? Like this was all about a car. And it's like, yeah, I mean, to be fair, it's a car worth millions. So understandable, but I mean, kind of won't do the guy any good, but being able to see it. Cause for him, it's like, this is this and the car were the only, cause wasn't her name Delilah. Uh, they're the only two treasures he had in this world before he went in, and so wanted to get one, well, I guess he, maybe in the end, he probably wanted to get both of them back, but definitely wanted to be, at the very least, be able to, because he wanted to say, like, oh, Delilah is kind of like a lot of st my criminal past in my life, because I I paid my dues, I did my time, he's like, but it's all like, like my criminal side of things, it's all in my past, but this is a part of his past, he couldn't let go, once again, understandably, like, would he have ever sold it? No, but it's just like what that car meant to him, I mean, maybe it could just be the monetary value, but yeah, just kind of an interesting case, and even, once again, still saying, like, oh, it was worth it, and it's like, no, it wasn't, because a, a, a poor guy died just because he had the same model of car that, uh, you know, you were asking someone to find and track, you know, it's like, yeah, it's interesting, too, because it's like, oh, like, because the conversation about, like, cars and stuff like that obviously happens with uh, Buck when, um, because they were able to get the serial number off the engine of the car despite them burning. And I guess, like, it didn't cross Buck's mind to think, like, oh, that's a possibility. Or maybe he thought, like, oh, like, uh, everything would burn. But it's like, no, uh, it was left behind and Cassie was able to get it. So she confronts Buck and asks him and Sonny about it. They're like, oh, yeah, I sold it to some guy a long time ago. What was his name? Uh, I don't know. It was something. And she's like, yeah, like, I ran into the guy. Does he fit this description? Buck's like... Oh, I think the easiest thing to be like, yeah, 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 I think it does. I think it does fit that guy's description. It's like, well, of course he wouldn't because it would have drawn trouble back to them because it would have, well, would have led to, uh, 
Walter and then it would have led to them. So it's like, no, because he's doing that. I mean, out of self-preservation, but also, I mean, because he loves Sonny because he knows like how this would trail back to Sonny. But also it's like he's doing it because like, right, that's Sonny's son. So I've got to protect him because I love my wife type of thing. So and like, I just love because I've never seen that expression on Reba's face that like just I mean, like maybe during the like, uh. The show, like, from time to time, she'd end up, like... Because, like, obviously, because of my association with Reba specifically when it comes to acting is her sitcom. Well, there was one she did a couple years ago, too. Not just, like, the Reba. There's Reba, but there was also, like, another sitcom. I think it was only maybe one season. It was short-lived, I believe. But it was, like, another sitcom she got, like, a couple years ago. And so, like, that's kind of my 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 area of expertise when it comes to Reba's, like, like acting career. Like, she's probably done other stuff, too, like dramas and stuff. But, like, yeah, like, sitcoms is kind of what I'm familiar with. So, like, seeing her kind of scowl and, like, be so devious is such a new thing for me. So, it kind of catches me off guard. It's like, it feels so weird to see Reba McIntyre being so devious, you know, covering up. Like, it just, it's, and I, maybe that's one of the things that probably attracted her to this is, like, maybe it's not in her career. Maybe it's something she hasn't really done a lot of. So, it's like, oh, my God, here's a script that came by that was like, oh my God, yes. I wonder, like, did they reach out specifically to Reba? Like, was it like written specifically for Reba? Did she have to like audition for it? You know, was it all for type of situation? You know, I'm always curious about behind the scenes stuff like that. Um, because you know, some roles are kind of specifically written for people from time to time. So, uh, I j I'm just, I'm just curious. Either way, um, Putting all that aside for real quickly, I just I just think it's so interesting that uh, she's just so annoyed at Cassie because it's like, oh, damn you for being so good at your job and us being well, they're not hardened criminals. They're they're sloppy. They have not handled this in the best way. To be fair, Sunny was handling this on her own for quite a while. It wasn't until recently she brought Buck into it, but by then things had already played out and Cassie's already like neck deep in this. Like, um, this thing. I mean, it doesn't help that there's um, a missing pat, uh, backpacker, now dead backpacker, who's kind of drawn, kind of caught up and is going to bring a whole bunch of the past to light. He's surfacing a lot. Is going to inadvertently be the reason why so much of, like, Walter's history gets surfaced. So they're struggling to kind of keep up. And Cormac knows something is up. And I even love that line he has with... Uh, uh, Cassie later. He's like, no, my parents are good people. And Cassie's like, I believe that too. She's like, I want it to be true. And then Cormac goes, maybe at the end of the day, maybe I do too. That even he's having doubts. Like, maybe there's more to my parents. Maybe the reason why I'm saying like they're good people is like, I don't know that for sure. Maybe I'm just hoping that's the case. Like, maybe I'm being blinded by my hope because like, these are my parents. Like, they can't be bad people. It's not possible. Can it? You know, I think that those are the questions that are rummaging through his mind and he feels so conflicted about it because he's not a part of all this. But when the going gets tough, will he be there for his family? Will he be there to kind of help take them down? Because we've seen over the course of the show, like families that have been at odds, like once again, the family from season one, the one that uh, Jenny had connection to, like one of the sons because she dated him. Um, I'm blanking on that. I mean, once again, there's only two members of that family left. Uh, Cheyenne, the daughter, and then, like, the mom. They're the only ones left, because literally everyone else, all three sons are dead, the dad's dead, so it's like, yeah. Um, so there, there's kind of that. So we've seen, like, kind of the families being divided, not all on the same page type of situation before, and lo and behold, here we are in this regard, so. It is kind of similar, too, with the whole, like, brothers being divided, and now instead of it being Jenny kind of on that, on that end of things, it's Cassie with, uh, Cormac. At the same time, all that's going down. Um, I thought it was so interesting that we had a meeting between Dono and um, and uh, oh god, uh, Walter. I was like, you guys are kind of two peas in a pod. Like you're so weird because like, he's like, oh yeah, like I used to live in the back of a butcher shop and it was lonely. You look like the type of guy that lives out here in the woods. And he's like, honestly, if you're going to stalk like the camp, you should be do a better job at it. He's like, I clocked you like five minutes ago. So kind of giving him tips. It's like they are kind of a little like both off their rockers, and they they both uh, are kind of cut the same cloth. So I would almost want when it's all said and done that Walter goes like and maybe starts working with Dono and Tanya. That probably won't happen. I. Can definitely see Walter dying at the end of this uh, storyline, but it, I feel like there's almost like some like almost respect Dono has for him. It's like, oh yeah, like like there's some camaraderie there that I was like, I wasn't expecting that between these two characters, but it's like, yeah, seeing them side by side, hearing them talk to each other, it's like, yeah, like they're both dangerous people, and it's like that almost makes you go like, wow, they are, uh, they kind of are something um, 
kind of once again two peas in a pod type of situation. We also get a clearer um, understanding of what it was that was stolen because once again I, I brought this up last episode. I thought it was straight up like oh I thought it was something they stole that they were going to sell for money, but then. Um, then uh, Luke said last episode was fifty million. I was like, oh, but then she's like, as a journal. I was like, oh, so it is. But it's like, no. Basically, the journal holds a password to the fifteen million that they stole because it's supposed to be like a crypto password or something like that. I believe it's it, it's definitely like a crypt. It's a it's a password to like a bank account. But I want to say it was specifically a crypto account. But I could be mistaken. He knows the words to the password. He just doesn't know the order. Only she knows the order. So. She must not have it off the top of her head because she needs the journal. So Luke, remember, he probably has the words written down on his own or he just naturally remembers it. He just doesn't know the order. Maybe she's in the same boat. Maybe even she doesn't remember the order. Maybe she, maybe it's like she, she'll probably like, if she had a refresher on what the words were, maybe she would know the order. So it's like both of them hold like half the password. And that was kind of the point that she didn't want Luke to have all the password to be able to know the order to put the words in just because she didn't want to take the chance he'd screw her over. But now that, like, you know, Walter came to her, like, yeah, you know, uh, well, first and foremost, I brought it up before, like, her manipulating him, being like, no, it's, it's okay, Walter, like, you do this for me, please, I just, I need that, you know, um, I need this, that journal is so important to me, but the moment he was like, yeah, there's some people here looking for you, I think, they're after you, and that's like, right, I mean, they were hired by the people who were after you, but, um, he's like, yeah, uh, don't worry, and he referenced, he, we finally get an answer to what happened with his step parents, and maybe I mean his not step parents, his foster parents, and maybe that's why Sonny defends him so much because maybe she knows the truth. Basically, his foster parents didn't treat him well, and there was a girl that he liked that stood up for him. As I like, right, she didn't like the way his uh, foster parents treated him, so she um, got hurt by them really badly, and that's why he killed them. He burned them alive while they were asleep because. He wanted, he wanted to make sure they never hurt her again. So it's like, it is that thing of, oh, it's sad he did what he did. So that's why I'm also wondering, like, maybe Walter isn't the heart's killer that we think he is associated with the, the killing that Denise said all those years ago. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. But there's also part of me like, you don't think it's going to be a twist where we find, because it could, there's some, it could be a DNA thing. There could be something that we might find out that Cormac is an innocent person we think he is. I mean... Buck is willing to go pretty, pretty far to protect his family and everything. I mean, we've seen Sonny go pretty far to protect everything. But I'm wondering, are we going to find out, for one, that the killer behind all the hearts and stuff like that, it's actually Buck? But it seems like they're leaning it into being Walter. But Walter does stuff out of self-preservation. So that's why I'm, like, curious what that's all about. Like, what he did was, like, there was someone he cared about that was in danger. That's why he killed his uh, foster parents because they were abusive to not only him but to this girl he didn't care about himself but the moment they hurt this girl like and some because someone who stuck up stood up uh, stood up for him and he, he gets like i think it's that thing of like when it comes to people he really likes like he's doing it with Paige. It's like i promise like oh i'll protect you so if those people come here i will kill them like know that i will look after you so, I mean, I guess it works out for Paige. She's kind of got a loyal kind of guard dog type of situation going on with um, with Walter. But I think it's just like, right, He like he's so off and like a little odd that I think he latches on to people and he gets very defensive of those people he latch on to. Even though, once again, Paige is just playing nice to him because she knows eh, he could easily murder him, murder me, but why not I take advantage of it considering he's willing to kind of go so far above and beyond for me, so why don't I take advantage of that? So We'll see how things kind of play out on that front. And at the same time, there's the whole situation which with Avery, then I'm like, okay, I still don't know what your deal is, homie. Like, obviously, he's leaning into the whole, like, him and Emily, like, oh, we're investigating stuff type of thing. And then Emily kind of let it drop, like, oh, you went into Paige and Luke's camp. And he was almost like, damn it, Emily, why'd you say anything? And she was almost like, sorry. He's like, right, so me going in there wasn't by accident. Emily's like, oh, I kind of feared it wasn't. So what's going on? And he's like, yeah, like, I was worried. It was at the time, like, we didn't know or Paige, or Paige or Luke or so like, yeah, I went looking in the bag and it's like, did you find anything? He was like, no, it's like, once again, so you were, and his justification, I don't fully believe there might be some truth to it, but at the same time, it's also like a, no, like there's got to be more to it. I just don't know why you're so motivated to be a part of this. Emily, it makes sense. Like, it seems like Emily, 
she piqued your interest and so did all this other stuff, but you want to keep Emily away from it because it's like, right, it's your, it's your new stepdaughter, so you don't want her to get caught up in the middle of whatever you're doing, but it makes you look super sus and just... The fact is, he's also still lying because he's like, they were like, oh, did you find anything? He was like, no, which we know he found the gun in the bag, which we now know that uh, we know Sonny has the gun currently. So I, I don't know what to really like make of what Avery's like true intentions are because he's because I was about to say, like, there's no way he's associated with the people that they stole from because it's like, right. He got, I mean, he got there at the ex they got there at the exact same time. Luke and Paige did, but then if that was the case, if there was someone already on the ground handling that, why would they hire, why would those same people hire, uh, Tanya and Dono? So it's like, yeah, it, but it seems like Avery's got his own, like, thing. Like I said, I, I don't even, I don't, and I think they're kind of, they specifically made that character because it's like, I think you can, you know, make direct parallels to uh, T-Lock is what I kept doing. But I think obviously he's a little smarter, a little shiftier than T-Lock. T-Lock was kind of like a bumbling idiot kind of making his way through who, you know, tried to do the right thing by the end, you know, sadly cost him. So we'll see if um, the same thing will happen for Avery and but like him saying like, oh, I don't, I didn't want to worry you because I knew you'd f call your dad in. He's swooping and be the hero. It's like, there might be truth in that. He makes it sound like, oh, it's just, cause she's even like, oh, like you kind of got to get over this whole like bow jealousy thing you got going on. So, but I think he probably legitimately just didn't want Bo involved because it's like, right. Last thing he needs is police sniffing around, but Cassie's already sniffing around. But to be fair, she's a private detective, but she has connections to both Bo and Jenny who are both cops. So yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see. I, I'm 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 so curious because he's also taking an interest of like yeah it is interesting how Luke left behind uh, the lady he was shacking up with which I don't know if that was the same lady later on because wasn't that wasn't the person they were talking about Mary and I think that's the same person from the end of the episode maybe maybe not uh, but it's like yeah all of a sudden kind of abandoned her now you're around Tanya and don't know those two new people in Cap hmm that's weird so he's keeping an eye on them probably going to do some snooping of his own. Which is probably going to be a bad thing because he's going to end up crossing paths with Dono in particular. So how that'll all turn out, we'll have to wait and see. But then we get the ending where um, Mary was like jogging or whatever, and she found Paige's stuff, and she immediately recognized it as like Paige's stuff and from her bag and everything. And the moment so suddenly was like, "No, no, I'll go with her." I was like, "Oh boy, this is probably not going to end well." And then Mary starts asking a whole bunch of questions like. You said that uh, Paige went to New York that you talked to her. It's like, oh, yeah, but it was most likely Luke, you know, pretending like maybe he took her phone or something. And the mayor's like, yeah, yeah, sure. And I'm like, first and foremost, that's not even what made her question it at first. But I was like, well, no, that doesn't make any sense. You made it sound like you and because she kept it vague enough that she, you could you could work your way around it. But I'm like the way you made it sound like you talked to Paige. Uh, and found out that she was in New York, but maybe it's like, right, she just called people to find out that, uh, hey, because if it was Luke, like, because she didn't make it sound like, oh, it was like a text message or something, the way she's making it sound like, oh, he must have taken um, Paige's phone, but like, how would he have, like, you would have recognized it if it was Luke's voice, so you had to be implying, like, he had to text you, like, there was, like, there was holes in that story, but then what really messed Sonny up is, all of a sudden, Mary's like, wait, how did you know it was that way? Because they went to a, like a fork in the road and you're like, and you can see the look on her face like, damn it, I messed up. It's like, yeah. Ooh, Sonny, you got caught 4D. Uh, I say 4D, 4K, Jesus. Uh, I mean, we're not even, you know, you get what I'm trying to say, like a camera. Uh, I was like, oh, man. I was like, you got caught. I was like, what are you going to do? I was like, well, we know she has a gun. I'm like, is she going to pop it off on Mary? But I'm like, no, that's going to make too much noise. Then Buck was there and she was starting to freak out. She's like, yeah, something's going on here. Because it's like, right, you keep being the one that makes excuses. Like, what's going on here? And Buck stabbed her. That's why I was like, yo, Buck isn't just about, yeah, I mean, he's already on the deep end for all this because he's trying to protect his family. So they're out of the territory of like, oh, we're just covering up for Walter. They are covering up their own crimes. I mean, to be fair, like, uh, Mary, not Mary, um, Sonny was already complicit in everything the moment she helped Walter, like, the moment she left the, the, um, Mark, the backpacker, to die. Like, she was already complicit when she helped dispose of the body, even, like, getting rid of Paige's, uh, bag and stuff. I try to cover up the fact is she doesn't know where Paige is, and there's also the chance, because she's not 100% sure Walter didn't have anything to do with that. But it's like, well, he did, but he doesn't, he didn't kill her. He's helping her, so... 
Oh boy, things just keep. And once again, I love the juxtaposition, not even the juxtaposition, but like, yeah, I think juxtaposition still would be the right word, because once again, that's my favorite word. Between Cormac saying, like, believing that his parents are a good people, to that scene of, like, yeah, but killing her. So I kept saying Mary, like, I was 100% sure, but it might not be. I might have the Winchesters on my mind, that's why. But it was it was something with an like M, wasn't it? It could have been Mary, but like I said, I could be 100% full of shit on that. Either way. So I thought that was fascinating. Something else just kind of like in episode on a little bit of a higher, uh, like happier note, more positive note. There was this cop that kept flirting with Jenny. Like Jenny like kept getting it this episode. Like, oh yeah, she's, I mean, I mean, Catherine Winnick is like, I mean, I mean, let's not, not beat around the bush. She's ex extremely beautiful. I mean, also obviously, you know, it should not, also doesn't need to be stated either that Kylie uh, Bunbury is like fucking ridiculously beautiful too. So it's like, you know, but speaking of the conversation of like, yeah, like I just thought it was so interesting that like this episode in particular, like they're just like, oh, Jenny, like you're so pretty. And it's like, like the dude was kind of hitting on her a little bit. I even love uh, Poppernick being like, oh, you say you weren't going to date cops anymore. Maybe you're going to fly to the other side. It's like, well, she kind of already did the little bit of the other side the last season because, well, she kind of did both last season because well, Travis was a cop, but he did some dirty shit. So it's like, yeah, she kind of like tiptoed that direction last season in particular. But um, because at first I was like, because I kept wondering, like, okay, like, because I, I was feeling that vibe with uh, oh god, uh, with Bo, but I wasn't sure which way it was like. Was it going to be him and Cassie, or was it going to be him and Jenny? But because of the whole Cormac angle, it definitely seems like it could be a him and Jenny thing. But she was like, he was like, oh, you're really not going to date cops? And she's like, no, why? You're going to be heartbroken? He's like, yeah, get o yeah, right. But it does seem like there is something there. Uh, but there's also the fact is that, like, well, she even pointed out, was it last episode or episode before last year? was like, oh, yeah, your ex. You are, you still have feelings for your ex. So, I don't know. The fact is, it's just a little seed that they're kind of planting. But I'm like, it definitely feels like it could easily be a bow in her situation. But I could also see that not happening because that could get into that complicated territory. Of, hey, we're con we're both two consenting adults. But then it, then it gets into that complicated territory of like, well, that is your boss. I mean, your temporary boss. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how that kind of plays out. So, like I said, just ending things on a little bit of a like a happier note. But either way, it's definitely going to be interesting to see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But uh, really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.